you need to understand how your autonomic nervous system works. Your autonomic nervous system is divided into two categories, sympathetic or parasympathetic. Sympathetic is more simply known as fight or flight system of the body. Parasympathetic is known as rest and digest. Now there is a reason I tell you this. When a baby is born, the parasympathetic system hasn't yet developed. So they have sympathetic dominance. That is why babies cannot digest well. They have high heart rates. Their pupils are huge. These are all signs of sympathetic dominance. As they become adults, the parasympathetic nervous system kicks in where you can digest better in your teenage years. But then when you mess up your system with American diet, being exposed to toxins, keep giving yourself the foods that you have intolerance with that you don't know about, and as you get older, the brain starts to degenerate and starts reverting to the sympathetic dominance as when you were a newborn. So that is why you develop constipation, inability to digest food. Then you may lose the sense of smell, sense of taste. Then you may feel you get allergies, nasal passages, they dry out because there's not enough mucus. When there is a sympathetic dominance, you start having chronic pain, chronic fatigue, irritable bowel syndrome, chronic urinary tract infections, fibromyalgia, migraines, adrenal gland malfunction, too much cortisol production. Cortisol is a stress-producing uh, uh, hormone. Memory and brain fog issues could be caused by inflammation. Inflammation in your body can cause brain inflammation, which causes brain fog, cloudy thinking, memory loss, on and on and on. Whenever you have inflammation from chronic pain, whenever you have inflammation, you can have from uh, food intolerances, food sensitivities, unmanaged autoimmune thyroid problem, unmanaged autoimmune problem, period. All of that will aid you to have brain fog and inflamed brain. Memory and brain fog issue could be caused by gut problems because gut problems feeds your brain problems. If you have issues with digestion, constipation, bloating, gas, this could be the hidden cause behind your brain fog which needs to be addressed. Brain fog may stem from poor circulation and insufficient oxygen. If you have cold nose, cold fingers, cold toes, you need to look into that. Memory and brain fog could be caused by hypothyroidism, as I said before, autoimmune Hashimoto's thyroiditis disease. There is multiple factors and conditions that could cause brain fog. It could be caused by an autoimmune attack, where your immune system gets attacked, it cannot handle the attack, as a result it attacks your organs or systems of the body, one could be your brain. So brain autoimmunity is more common than people realize. If the immune system is attacking and destroying your brain cells, brain fog, cloudy thinking, sleep and memory issues could occur, very common. Brain fog could be caused by head injuries. I see it plenty of times with young high school or college athletes. And they're labeled as attention deficit disorder. Meanwhile, they play football and they have cloudy thinking. And it will haunt them for the rest of their life. So now you don't have to be chronically ill to have brain degeneration. Many times, there is no obvious cause why you have brain fog or cloudy thinking. It is silent. We already talked about food and environmental sensitivity that can suppress your parasympathetic system, the rest and relax system. 
and it will lead to insomnia, high blood pressure, chronic digestive issues. If you reintroducing the foods that you don't know you're sensitive to, but you are sensitive to, to your body, you're going to have chronic digestive issues. No matter how much antacids you take, you're not going to get fixed. No matter how much probiotics you take, you're not going to get fixed. It has to be handled in an orderly, sequential manner based on diagnostic testings that are performed so you can function better. Now the next point is, in a healthy brain, as neurons become stimulated, they create more branches into each other and make these super highways to work more efficiently. This is called neuroplasticity. This neuroplasticity happens when you have damaged brain cells. The brain cells next to it, it will take over its job. This is what we want. When they do stroke rehabilitation, this is an example. They want neuroplasticity. When there is a multiple sclerosis with the walking difficulty, they want neuroplasticity. Now, functionally, we want neuroplasticity also because the best time to treat dementia or Alzheimer is before you get dementia and Alzheimer. How? By keeping your activities and brain cells stimulated. In order for your brain to build these super highways, you need oxygen, as we talked about, you need glucose, you need proper food intake, avoid foods that your body is sensitive or reactive to. One common one is gluten. We talked about that in our other videos. Stop sugar and stop sugar fluctuations. You need to balance your sugar levels. We will teach you how to do that. And I said proper constant stimulation of your brain neurons. It is not just about the number of neurons that you have. It is about how well they communicate your brain neurons to each other. In order for our brain to stop degenerating or stopping degeneration, we need to reactivate your brain neurons naturally. Did you hear it? Naturally, not with Red Bull. We need to start making these super highways that I talked about. In order to make these highways, you need to properly do a brain assessment called a QEEG from a doctor who understands functional neurology, who understands functional medicine. Otherwise, if you don't use these neurons, you're going to lose these neurons because they're going to die. It is called negative plasticity.